we're heading down to Miaro to spearfish. It's actually off the east coast of Trinidad and we tend to usually get some really nice water out there. So that's where we're heading today. We're actually going to be free dive spearfishing, so it's no tanks. It's one breath at the surface of the water. You go down and you're one with Mother Nature, you're one with the ocean. It's actually quite relaxing and you get a very short opportunity because of your breath to shoot that fish. Sometimes you don't get them, sometimes you do, but that's just how it goes. So it's important to take the time the day before to make sure that all the equipment in check. Check over your guns, your fins, your mask, your wetsuit. You'll be surprised. Any little mal malfunction could ruin your entire day. All right, so the gun I'm holding here is typically speaking what you will find um, an average sparrow using. This is the setup that we all started off with, the whole group. So we have this is this is two power bands, the sharp air. Uh, this is a Euro type gun. Um, recently, we moved on to a more modern design, which is what Josh is holding. And Josh, what do you think about that design? Yeah, well, the main advantage about this design is that after it's loaded and you pull the trigger, there's zero recoil versus the conventional style, which has a ton of recoil. So that to me is a main advantage. And it's one rubber, so you don't have to load two or three bands, you just load one, and it's thicker than the rest. And because it's pre-tensioned here, you could set the pre-tension all the way back to here, and you could get the same power, or more power, than the conventional style with two or three bands. So I'm excited to use this gun and hopefully shoot some big fish with it. We'll see what happens. So we're going free dive spear fishing, and every time this happens and the boys get together, there's always a competition. We're always trying to outdo one another. Either someone's trying to shoot the most fish or the biggest fish, there's always some kind of competition going on. So we'll see what happens today. Tomorrow, are we going to get again? Oh, every trip you'll have a red gears, boy. I mean, it's a big year tomorrow for your diving partner. Every time you go, are you rigging gears? My prep is a little different from the um, rest of the boys. I just had all my stuff home ready, so I just packed it basically. Put my gears in a bag, got my gun out. And that was it for me, I was ready, ready to roll the next day. I know I did gears for the past like five years. And I still shoot in bigger fish than yours. No! <laughs> you hear this one? one? You, you hear this one? one? Yeah? So Reese comes up with this brilliant challenge to say he's saying that he don't need to fix up his gears, he's gonna shoot bigger fish than Josh and myself. But let me tell you something. If Reese thinks he could shoot bigger fish and more fish than Josh and myself. You always see butty head on the last dive he went on. This one, Watch out. Biggest, biggest grouper. Biggest grouper tomorrow. What chance? Biggest pond. We go here. We go here. Biggest. Biggest catch tail. Go lower, yes, sir. You see the end of this one? So it's 3 30 in the morning. I literally sprung off my bed. Real excited for what the day has to bring. Um, the guys are coming to my house just now and I'm ready to go. All my equipment is already packed, just to fly downstairs and meet them. I think they're going to be here soon. Alright, so a couple of things you have to do before you reach Miaro. You have to stop for gas. Usually we take two 20 gallon kegs, take a gas station, fill up with super. And we always have to add some two stroke outboard motor oil. If you don't put the right mixture, you could damage the guys, the boatman's engine, and you don't want to do that. So we always get that mixture perfect. So we have a smooth day sailing, and we have no problems on the ocean. That's the last thing you want to have. Engine problems out there, no way. So the trip to Miara is a long trip, but it usually passes very fast because we're all talking amongst each other. We're predicting what we're going to shoot, where we're going to go, how the conditions are going to be, the conversations and less previous fish that we've shot. And before you know it, with our conversation, we reach. We're at the point where we're looking out to the sea, we're checking the conditions firsthand. We know what we're going for. I mean, we're ready to get the day started. The east coast of Trinidad could be a very unforgiving place. It's the Atlantic Ocean we're dealing with. There's high winds, big seas, big swells, and a lot, a lot of current if you go on your wrong day. Yeah, so on your way down to Miaro, there's a place you stop off, you buy some ice, um, you get two crocus bags of ice, and that should be enough to keep us for the day. You need to keep the catch fresh, and also our food and drinks fresh for the, for the whole day. So 
So when we get to Mayaro, one of the first things we have to do is go to the captain's house. He has the engine, he has the, the anchor, and of course he's the captain. So we're going to pick him up and check out Maggie. Maggie and the kid. <laughs> People don't realize how important a good captain is, especially when it comes to spare vision. You have a lot of things happening. As I mentioned before, you have strong currents, high winds. You need somebody who's responsible, who knows the ocean, and you need to have that relationship with that in individual. They have to know what part of the reef you want to go, where you're going, where you're going to be. You know, you're putting a lot in the hands of this one individual, so you want a safe captain. And that's why we rely on Captain Tero. That's why we always call Captain Tero. Um, we go there, we pick up the engine and a couple other things necessary for launching the boat and we head to the beach. The first thing we realized when we pulled up on the beach was the Sagasso seaweed. It was literally everywhere. A full carpet on the beach, and you know, first things people are asking is, where is it coming from? Why is it here? I mean, I'm, I'm not 100% sure of the reason, but it seems like we have some kind of difference different currents come to Trinidad now or something of that sort. The first thing we do when we reach the beach is put the boat in the water. That's usually the hardest task for me. I mean, it's a big boat, it's heavy, it's only four of us, we have no one to help us on the beach this time, unfortunately, and to make matters even worse, it's the lowest tide for the year and we reach there on the low tide. So what we do is we push the boat in the water first and then we transfer the things from the van onto the boat. So it's easier that way, easy to push it between water, less load. And then we transfer the engine onto the boat. And from there we head out. At Beacon, we make what seems impossible available to everyone. Why pay the whole premium when it can be managed one affordable slice at a time? It's the most ridiculously convenient thing to happen in insurance. Call us at Beacon today to find out more about paying your premiums one slice at a time. Beacon, switched on. So the spot we decided on was approximately 25 miles out. Halfway to that spot we realized, you know fellas, it's too rough. You know we're taking licks whole way, banging, banging whole way, everybody getting soaked with salt water. We cut that plan short and said, alright, making a left turn, we're going to a different spot. A spot that's closer, easier to get to. And we said, alright, let's get the ball rolling at this particular spot. Yeah, so it's the East Coast. Normally you see lots of fish, big fish, um, beautiful spots, uh, clean water. So everybody's expectations high and all the boys are excited and ready to get into the water. Right, so the first spot we went down um, is a pretty sizable reef. They had a lot of fish, a lot of life, um, lots and lots of barracudas. But we didn't really see the size that we wanted, you know, didn't have big ones. So we decided to move on to the next spot. I was the guy to break the ice. Um, went down in this, is a pretty deep spot. Uh, it was 72 feet to the bottom. Headed down, straight to the bottom, lay down, sat down for a while. I heard Reese calling because he was a spot diver. He was just above me with the camera. Pointed out a nice yellow jack. I spun the gun, tracked it, got a shot, and we landed the fish. So it's about my third drift for the day. Um, I've seen a lot of fish, but just not the size that I want to shoot, you know? I prefer quality over quantity. But because I was using a new gun, I wanted to test it out, see if I could actually shoot a fish with it before I actually line up on a big fish and miss. 
So a school of barracuda swim spas, they're pretty small, but I'm happy to shoot the barracuda and test out the gun. So I pull the trigger and I land a good shot and the, fish, the gun works perfectly. Bring the, boat, bring the fish to the boat and I'm happy. Before I know it, Josh has a barracuda. Two minutes later, Brett has shot a fish. Next dive, I'm really hoping I can end up shooting something nice and put something in the boat. And then one of the last dives on this spot uh, before we left to go on to another spot, actually shot one of the better fish I shot for the day, which is a Cubera snapper. And it was a pretty good shot. It was a stone shot. The fish ruled. Uh, you can really ask for much more in a, in, a, in a shot on a fish like that. The fish roll and just want a piece of fish is easy. It's a good shot. Cubera snapper, uh, it's one of the most sought of the fish in Trinidad to shoot because they get really big and they're really smart and intelligent fish and a hard fish to shoot. And they also look really mean. They have some big teeth. Um, it's a big, broad fish. Some, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's brown, depending on what the water conditions are. And it's just a really cool fish to shoot. One of my favorite fish to shoot. One of the dives I took down, I went down to the bottom. It was about 72 feet to the bottom. As I went down and lay down, I realized a barracuda was off to my left, coming in pretty aggressively, putting on a very de defensive display. He kind of opened his mouth, shaking up his head. Um, he went behind a rock and I was kind of tracking him, swimming, swimming, keeping low, head on. And as he came over the rock, I lined up the shot, pulled the trigger. Gun was on safety. And he just laughed and swam away and I just headed up to the surface, sour. So I'm breathing up for my next dive. I'm in a new spot, you know, new hopes. I only have this barracuda my, under my belt, so it's a little disappointing for me, but I'm pretty sure that this spot is going to produce. I'm going to get a good fish in this spot. Positive thoughts. So I take a good breath and I start to head on to the bottom. And when I'm about 50 feet down, I start to look at the reef. It's a perfect drop. And I spot this big dog tooth snapper. I mean, it wasn't a, a huge fish, but for the species, it's a big fish. So I'm looking at this fish and I want to get him, you know? And I'm getting onto the bottom. I'm stalking the fish and the fish, it, it didn't want anything to do with me. So my technique was to lie down on the bottom and stay as completely still as possible. Hence the reason I took that good breath, just in case this happened. So I laid down on the bottom and as expected, the fish turned, came straight up to me, and I managed to put off a perfect shot with the, the new gun. And with that one, I knew I was back in the game. So dog tooth snapper, or pag as we locally call it, is known for its distinct line below the eye. It almost looks like a teardrop snapper, which is what we call it. Um, it's one of the best tasting fish to eat, and it's also very difficult to shoot. With Beacons, you choose motor policy. You select the benefits that suit your style and pocket. Contact us at 623-2266 or log on to beacon.co.tt for a quote today. Beacon, switched on. Spearfishing to me is one of the purest sports there is. It's just you in the ocean and one breath. Not only is it the purest, but it's the most selective and sustainable form of catching a fish. Unlike a rod or a reel, you can't determine what fish you're gonna catch or what size you're gonna catch. Unlike a net, I mean, there's no discrimination. It kills everything. Turtles, juvenile fish, you name it, it kills it. I've personally seen entire reefs being demolished by nets, these ghost nets. As for spear fishing, you literally go down and you have a choice. You choose what you're gonna take. The diving has been pretty difficult throughout the day. Conditions a bit hard, water not as clean. Not seen as much fish as we expected, but um, we got lucky on this one dive. I was stayed on for kind of long, not seeing much, and this school of yellow jacks swam up to me. It's one of the better tasting fish out there, so 
I took a shot on one, it was a kind of long shot, on a high shot, and a nice size yellow jack, so it took off and it ran, ran a good bit of cord off my reel, and I had to actually fight it off the reef in order to get up to the surface, because if it gets on that reef, it could tangle up and it could, could end up being pretty bad for me, because with that current and that type of water conditions, it could give a lot of trouble to get that fish back off the reef. So I'm lying on the bottom, it's 73 feet of water, and I'm looking around, I'm not seeing any fish, and I just happen to look over my shoulder and see a hogfish. And a hogfish is like one of the best tasting fish you can get, for me personally anyway. So one time I point my gun and I, and I say, right, I'm gonna shoot this fish. Pull the trigger and boom, stone him. He's, he's lights out and I'm a happy camper. Okay. All right, most of the has gone by. At this point in time, I haven't shot anything as yet. So right now, I'm really hoping. Each drive I make, I'm like, come on. I miss. I've shot a lot of fish, but nothing really to say I would want to shoot. A lot of small barracudas, small red pug. I'm really hoping to find something I want to pull the trigger and get put in that boat. I missed a fish earlier. I saw these things go. And I'm really hoping to get a fish soon. So one of my favorite fish to shoot, hands down, is a Kibera snapper. They're elusive, they're smart, they're fast, they're literally deep, they get massive. And by far one of the most challenging to shoot. The biggest one I've ever shot was like 76 pounds, and I've shot a couple within the 40 to 60 pound range. So I just got to the surface and Brett was like, hey, kingfish, kingfish. He had just saw a kingfish below me that I didn't see. So I took a quick breath, went down, I started to look for these fish. And it was a little murky, so it's hard to see. And I'm looking, I'm going down, going down, like, wait, these fish aren't here. And eventually, I'm almost close to the bottom, I'm out of breath. And I spot this fish. So I swam them as fast as I can. And I just squeezed the trigger. And somehow, I managed to pull off a holding shot. And the reel just spooled off, swam to the surface, and the premier fight was on. I headed down on this dive. Um, we actually missed the reef on this spot, so I was off in flats, went down to the bottom, took a look, didn't see anything, headed back up. As I headed back up, I looked down briefly, saw a really nice white margit, headed right back down, lined up the shot, pulled the trigger, got a perfect stone shot, and um, that was actually my first white margit, so I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. It was nine pounds, and the biggest one, and the first one I ever caught. Throughout the rest of the day, we had some really nice dives. I uh, shot some barracudas, some pyramid. Um, Josh shot some really good fish. Reese shot some really good fish. Ross shot nothing because he never shoots anything. <laughs> So, you know, we had a, a cooler full. Um, it was more than enough to feed everybody and to pay back for gas. And we headed back to the beach. Overall, it was a good day. Um, the conditions weren't the best. The water wasn't as clear as we would have liked it to, uh, to have been. Um, they had a lot more current than usual. It was a little windy, a little choppy. Um, but we shot some fish, and trust me, a day diving with your friends beats a day at the office any day. At Beacon, we make what seems impossible available to everyone. Why pay the whole premium when it can be managed one affordable slice at a time? It's the most ridiculously convenient thing to happen in insurance. Call us at Beacon today to find out more about paying your premiums one slice at a time. Beacon, switched on. I 
Sean va zaba bet chapi. So we reach a beach and thank goodness there's a, a group of guys that are willing to help us. Um, I mean we're tired, it's a long day and our priority is to pull up the boat. And what we did was tie a rope from the boat onto one of the cars, one of the vans that we were driving. And that kind of aided us with bringing up the, the boat. So I wish we could do that going into the water. So as we unpack in, obviously, you know, they have people liming. Curiosity kicks in. Everybody wants to see what's going on, what we caught, questions start coming up. You know, what you saw out there? Saw any sharks? What kind of fish y'all you you shot? So we open the cooler. And I start to freak out. What? Big fish, boy, where you shoot that? Yay! Do you like the fish big sir? Okay, I know. Red fish, baby. Red fish! I respect you, boy. Yeah, that's how we roll. Hey, So after pulling up the boat, um, as a token of appreciation, we give the guys a couple of fish. You know, that's kind of a tradition. And they were asking us, like, how we got the fish. And when they realized that we shot the fish free diving on one breath, you know, they were fascinated. And then the fact that we load these guns, I mean, some of the guys were trying to load the gun and they couldn't even load it. And you know, with that, they were just all curious and asking us a bunch of questions. And it was really something to see that the sport that we do is, is such an intriguing sport, you know? It was, it was a nice thing to experience. The pate on that water. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. So many guys on the beach were really impressed with our equipment. So we should give them a quick rundown how the guns work. Kind of show them how you, know, how you load up the gun. Um, different equipments and different things on how they work. Uh, we told them we couldn't stay. You know, we had to get stuff out of the way, lots of coolers to pack, and the fellas said, hey, you know, if you all want, we'll help you all. Sharks, I mean, we see sharks, but it's a little strange. Like one day you see five, and the next, none or you shoot a fish and one will just appear out of nowhere and you haven't seen one for the day. They're, they're funny like that, elusive but curious at the same time. However, when I see a shark, whether it's a 5 foot reef shark or a 15 foot tiger shark, the level of respect remains the same. 